Okay, in the last six months, I slaved on the new book. I'm happy to say that it's finished. I will not describe the book here because the book is a novel. I want to talk about the concepts of the book. The book is called Necessary but Not Sufficient, and in my eyes, what I've tried to uh, portray in that book is technology. How should we use technology? Now, this is totally banal, yet I'm afraid that regarding almost any technology that we use, it takes a long time until we get the benefits, and not because of the technology, but because of the way that we implement it. And I'm talking about any technology whatsoever. And the motto of how to do it right is a recognition that technology by itself is necessary, but not sufficient. Now, let me explain what I mean. For technology to bring benefit, it must be that the technology is diminishing an existing limitation. Let me say it again. Technology will bring benefit if and only if this technology diminishes an existing limitation. Why do I claim it? If the technology does not diminish any limitation whatsoever, how can it possibly bring any benefit? It's obvious that it cannot. At the same time, if the technology does diminish a limitation, then it must bring benefit. Otherwise, why do we call the thing that it diminished a limitation to start with? And this is the base for my claim that technology will bring benefit if and only if it diminishes a limitation. But now, let's take it a step further. The limitation, by definition, had to exist before the technology is brought into the game. What do we do when we have limitation? What we do is we live with it until we solve it. We learn to live with our limitation. Which means, due to the fact that we have a limitation, we have developed some habits of behavior. And if the limitation is big, some rules of behavior. And if the limitation is very big, way of life. So that we do not constantly crash into the limitation. We learn to live with it. For example, before we had trains and cars, we had a limitation. And because of it, our way of life was that our living distance from the place that we worked was usually no more than one hour walk. That was the way of life. Now, look what's happening. Suppose that we implemented the new technology. And we implemented it very nicely, what we call very nicely. We implemented it so that the limitation was diminished. But we did not address at all the rules that acknowledge the existence of the limitation, the rules that enable us to live together with the limitation. And we don't touch them at all. Will we get the full benefits that we should have get from the technology? And the answer is definitely not. These rules are bringing back the limitation for all practical purposes. Let me give you an example to see to what extent this phenomena exist. And all my examples I will take today from computer systems. Here, in, in some way, I'm closing a circle. The work of TOC have started with scheduling software. Yes, that was 20 years ago. Then, in 86, it was kiss goodbye software, let's do the real things. Now. I'm saying, no, 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 it's about time to bring it back, so I'm closing a circle. I'm now going to talk again about computer software or computer systems and how to really get the benefits from them. So I will go back now, in order to demonstrate this concept that I've just told you, let's take the field and the era of MRP. So when we are talking about the MRP, what was the limitation that the MRP have tried to diminish? And in my opinion, the limitation was the speed to do net requirement. Now let me explain. Suppose that we get an order from a client. And our question is, what should we produce? What should material should we order in order to be able to supply the order? If I'm getting a flood of orders, and for each order I have to do all this work, and I have a product of, let's say, even three levels in the bill of material, this is a lot of manual work. At the end of the 70s, beginning of the 80s, the rules almost everywhere was you do net requirement once a month. 
Yes, we knew very well that due to that, the inventories are much higher, and we knew very well that due to this mechanism, we are jeopardizing our ability to react fast to an order. Because we are not dealing anymore with an individual orders here. So wait for next month, minimum. No wonder, because the amount of work was enormous. Can you imagine 20 people doing all this work almost all the time? Now came the MRP. With a beautiful computer, and surprise, surprise, all this work was done overnight. I remember still the enthusiasm. Overnight! By the way, today on the PC, it takes about five minutes. Overnight! And of course, this is a huge thing, and the MRP crusade started to move, and almost every company cracked and bought the MRP and implemented it. And then you started to hear some murmur coming out. More and more people says, wait a minute, I've done all this work, where are the benefits? And then, as a reaction to all these huge complaints, we went and invented a new concept. And this was called Class A Users. Class A User meant what? What do you have to do in order, really, to do it right? How much education have you given to all the people involved? Education about dependent and independent demands, education about uh, optimized batch uh, quantity, all of that. And how much did you invest in cleaning the data? Because the computer is dumb. And the data have to be accurate. And we started to talk about 99% accuracy of data required. And then, of course, people came and said, wait a minute, I'm not saving even one person. Before that, I had 20 people doing the net requirement. Now I have 20 people cleaning and checking the data. There was very few companies that talked about startling bottom lines benefits. Huge reduction inventory, huge reduction in response time. They were maybe something like 3% of the MRP users. By the way, in the big debate that APICs have held in 86, if I'm not mistaken, and I was one of the uh, debaters, and the question came, what do you think about class A users, uh, the whole concept, and I said, I think that this is baloney. Because of one reason. In all the criteria of becoming class A user, there, was, there is, for me, one measurement missing. How much bottom line have you done from it? There was no mention on bottom line benefits. And I said, you're missing the boat here. Because in order to be class A user, what I see is how much money have I paid to the software, how much money have I paid to the implementers, what about what I'm getting? My question is, here is a technology that diminished the limitation without a doubt. Rather than almost a whole month to do the net requirement, it takes overnight. And this limitation is severe, because due to that limitation, the way that we have lived have caused us to more than double the inventory, and to who knows by how much we are increasing the delay in our ability to, uh, to react to the market. Remember, with this mechanism, I cannot react immediately, it's minimum one month. How come that only 3% or 4% of the companies have got benefits and all the rest did not? Can anybody guess what happened? By the way, I must admit that at that time, I myself didn't pay attention to it. Well, it turned out that the vast majority of the companies that implemented MRP continued to run the computer to do that requirement once a month. Hello. Now, of course, you don't get the benefits, which means Whenever you take a new technology, the first question that you have to ask yourself is what limitation or limitations this technology diminishes? Once you get this answer, now comes the real question that almost nobody asks. What rules are we employing today that all their purpose is to enable us to live with the limitation? Because if we don't identify these rules, the chance that we will touch them and change them is minimal. Once we identify these rules, now we have to ask another question. What should be now the rules? Now that we are going to eliminate, to diminish this limitation, what should be now the rules? Because there is more than one possibility, and some of them are not exactly nice. Only then are we going to get the full benefit from the technology. If we don't do that, sometimes we'll get a fraction of the benefits, sometimes we'll get even negative. The more powerful the technology, and powerful the technology means the more huge limitation it diminishes, the bigger is the problem if we don't address the rules that were instituted much before the technology, the rules that enable us to live with the limitation.